we'll go ahead and, and get started. And before we begin tonight, I just wanted to bring something up. This weekend, many of you join your teammates, friends, and others in the UNC athletic community to take a stand. It was a chance for you to stand up for your own life and an opportunity for you to stand with teammates and friends saying to the world that their lives matter and have great value. I and our AIA and FCA staff want to say that we believe that Black Lives Matter. Saying Black Lives Matter isn't an endorsement for any one organization. It's simply a statement of truth. The recent acts of racial injustice are a display of how Black lives have been undermined and devalued. Our desire is to bring attention to the assault on and systemic disregard for these brothers and sisters. Made in the image of God, as we say together, Black Lives Matter. Jesus himself took his team of disciples through Samaria to break down racial and ethnic sin. And if Jesus took his team through Samaria, we should be willing to do the same. So we, th we thank you all for, for taking a stand this weekend and, and continuing to help fight racial injustice and systemic racism as we look to Christ as, as an example and know that each and every one of us was made in the image of God. So yes. tonight, uh, just a, a few announcements. Uh, we're going to be joined by Kenny Williams uh, from the two th graduated in 2019, played basketball there, and, and Mike Exton Camper are going to be uh, teaching tonight and breaking us in, into groups. And we're going to try and get there as fast as we can. So I may move fast with some announcements. But first, uh, one of the things that we just found out about that is launching for the first time ever this year is Ultimate Training Camp, or sorry, Ultimate Training Academy. Uh, some of you are familiar with UTC, which is Ultimate Training Camp. Some of you did it this summer. I did it this summer. Dawn did it this summer. We didn't have to do this special, which was uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to do it this summer and not have to do it in person. But what UTA is, is it's a 10-week virtual learning experience designed to help athletes better integrate their faith life in the context of sports. UTA will use 10 sessions starting September 14th and running through November 16th, and it'll be 35 minutes long uh, to expand on the five principles that is taught at Ultimate Training Camp. And those five principles are audience of one, who or what do I worship, inside game, what motivates me, holy sweat, holy surrender, how do I move, how do I grow and move forward, uh, hurting for certain, how do I respond to pain and suffering, and fifth, victory beyond competition. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, when we drop some links in, we're gonna drop that in there as well. And we want to encourage you to go ahead and check it out. Um, if you don't have tutoring sessions, you don't have class Monday night at eight o'clock, I would encourage you just to, to jump into this. Uh, I really loved what I got to experience this summer with UTC and I know Ultimate Training Academy is gonna be awesome too. And so um, the cost is zilch. That's another reason why I think it's awesome is there's no way that, you know, they, that money's going to cost you from going there. So um, we want to encourage you to do that. It, you can sign up tonight. You can sign up tomorrow. But again, it starts in 12 days. So if you're interested, go check it out. Again, our verse for the semester for the year is Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, which says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Uh, one of the things we're doing is trying to just kind of gain as much information as we can. So if you can, um, go ahead and change your name uh, to correspond with what year you are. You know, if your first year put one, then your name. Sophomore, it just helps us with splitting people up, making sure that, you know, we don't have to have a, a group of one, one grade. And also so we don't put um, someone who's graduated maybe in a group um, when we're trying not to do that. So if you can, just go ahead and change your name. Uh, and then, again, we, we talked last week about discipleship. We really want to walk alongside you and help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. I know it's weird being in front of a camera, but uh, we're going to try and be creative. You know, everybody grab a cup of coffee. We'll have coffee together. You over, over Zoom, me here at my desk, uh, or 
with our staff team. And we have eight staff, uh, Mike, Kim, Dawn, myself, Mitch, Bobby, Adam, and Hope. And our sole job, uh, what we've kind of dedicated our life to is walking alongside you and just helping you, like I said, grow in your faith with uh, Jesus Christ. And if you just have questions as well, that's, that's also why we are here. So we want to make sure that you all stay connected to what's going on. Um, we have a, a text number that if you ever have questions and you want to kind of do it anonymously, you can do that. Uh, you have a text message number right there. We want you to join the group me and we want you to follow on social media just as we promote different things that come up. And it's also a way for you to kind of promote things or, or tag teammates to get them to, to come out to something that you may be interested uh, throughout the semester because we're, again, trying to make this a semester that uh, it, it, we know it's a little different, but we want to make sure that we're valuing your time and speaking about things that you want to hear about and having people um, who you want to hear from speak about them. If you ever need anything, it's all on our link tree on Instagram, and you can always point people there for the, the Zoom meeting information uh, and anything else that they may need. So we're going to drop some links in the chat. I got it, Adam. Don't don't worry. Uh, just the, the first time guests, you know, if this is your first time coming out tonight, we want just to get to kind of know you a little more and we want you to, to fill out this. Uh, you know, if you want to join group me, you can do it right there. And if you just want to receive anonymous prayer, you could fill out that prayer request. Uh, and there's the, the link for the Ultimate Training Academy to check out more. And there's our contact information for the text and uh, the email. So last week we, we started with doing some games. You know, we'll have something entertaining each week. We're gonna continue with riddles because they're quick and fast. And so uh, without further ado, the way that we're gonna do this is, uh, this is for a $10 Purple Bowl gift card. Uh, we were trying to do DoorDash and Uber Eats, but they don't allow you to do anything other than $25. So maybe we'll sprinkle those out through the semester, but right now, uh, we're going to continue with Purple Bowl $10 gift cards. And if for some reason Purple Bowl doesn't work for you, just let me know. We just want you to be happy with what you win. So you're going to go ahead and drop the answer into the chat. So again, you want to open up your chat. And then the first person that says the correct answer wins the $10 gift card. And then just uh, connect with me, drop your email uh, if I don't have it already. And we'll make sure you get that. All right, so get your keyboards ready, your chats ready, and here we go. What belongs to you, but other people use it more than you? So go ahead and, and throw that in there. Ooh. All right, we have a tie. We have Olivia and Cam uh, were, the, were already the winners. Um, so I like some of your answers, your time, your voice. I would agree that people sometimes use your time more than you. But so the answer is, I like that someone put, uh, I like Mason that you put your name, image, and likeness. That's kind of funny. Uh, so, but your name is the answer. So Olivia and Cam, uh, if you can go ahead and actually just shoot uh, an email to tarheel.unc.aia at gmail.com, uh, I will follow up back with you and make sure you guys get your gift cards. Uh, and so Olivia and Cam. All right, tonight, Sydney is gonna go ahead and open us up in prayer. Uh, so Sydney, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself and open us up in prayer, please. Great, let's pray. Um, dear Jesus, thank you for just who you are and um, just giving us many opportunities to come together and learn more about you. Um, I pray that you'll open our hearts to hear your word um, and that you'll um, give your words to Mike and Kenny um, that we can grow from them. Um, thank you for everyone who's able to come today and that we can all grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Sydney. Uh, so tonight, we, you know, special for, for all of us. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Mike and, and he's brought along Kenny. Uh, Mike, some of you may not know, but uh, which is kind of weird. You know, we're in our, our third week, but Mike and his wife, Kim, have actually been on staff with Athletes in Action at UNC starting their 38th year 
I believe. Am I right? And so I got the head nod. 38th year. So uh, I think only Adam and I and Bobby and Dawn and Mike and Kim are even older than how long he's been at UNC, which is kind of crazy and just speaks about your faithfulness and the lives of so many people that, that you've uh, been used to impact and walk alongside. And so uh, Mike is a great person to talk to. You know, hopefully we'll be able to be back in person someday soon and you'll be able to kind of get to interact with him. And, and he is going to be joined uh, by Kenny Williams. So Kenny graduated in 2019, was a, a member of the basketball team. You know, you can see the picture there, Mike and Kenny. They both look great. Uh, Kenny is, is, uh, was a phenomenal basketball player, but also uh, a guy that just loved Love Jesus, and uh, one of the cool, really cool things was uh, hit on senior day for the basketball team, they allow the seniors to have a speech. And he and his two roommates, Luke May and Cam Johnson, basically shared the gospel to the entire uh, Dean Dome, and it was just awesome. And so uh, I'm just really excited to hear from both of them. And if Kenny talks about uh, Jesus, the way that he plays basketball, we're in for a treat because he always just wore his heart on the sleeve and I'm just excited to, to hear from them. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put myself on mute and just listen. Well, thank you, Scott. Uh, Kenny, I love the picture. We have a basketball group. We've been having it for a number of years and we would always comment on Kenny's biceps. It was always who had the biggest biceps. So whatever you did in that picture, man, you made yourself look pretty big. But Scott, yeah, thank fine. you. Yeah, look at that, man. You just, you love it. Well, Kenny's from Richmond, and he's in a position now where he's trusting God with his next step. His agent is trying to find a, a team for him. So Kenny's just kind of been waiting. He's, he's training, spending good time with his family, but he's, he's in waiting, which a lot of us have experienced and will again. But I loved your comment earlier, Kenny, that you said you you have a history with God and how he's been faithful to you and you know, he's going to be faithful in the future. So we're just excited for you, for your heart. Uh, personally, I love Kenny. I love his heart, his openness. There's been a lot of vulnerability in the basketball group. And I told him, I said, Kenny, you've got a good taste of what biblical community is really like. And now for the rest of your life, you're going to understand what to look for. So I am just, thrilled that Kenny can be with us. I'm just going to ask him a couple questions. He's going to set the table for us, and then we're going to have just about five minutes in some breakout rooms. And I was telling him, and I tell Kim often, my wife, that, you know, it's not about us just telling people stuff. It's about us being with them in the process and them discovering things. And so the breakout rooms are just Hey, you, if you want to say something, you want to, I have three questions for you. If you want to say something, go ahead. You don't have to say anything. But the more we process, the more you start realizing, gosh, I didn't even think about that. And God speaks through his word. He speaks through prayer, through the church, through the Holy Spirit. He also speaks through people. So there'll be times when, again, somebody will say something and you think, I didn't even think about that. Well, that, that's how God speaks. And then we'll come back together. I'll share a few passages. We'll kind of chat a little bit and then we'll go back into breakout rooms about 8.45 for about 10 minutes and you'll just work on two questions. Again, it's more about processing. Hey, be as open as you want, but that's kind of where we're going. So to start, Kenny, we're gonna start from the human perspective because our big question is like, what are we guaranteed? Like, what are we guaranteed in life? And so Kenny, from your perspective, just being a human, what are we guaranteed by just being human? And go ahead. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think about things as human that we're guaranteed um, is we're really guaranteed to mess up sometimes. Uh, you know, things won't go our way. Uh, we might have a decision that we make or, you know, something that we have decided to do and, you know, it won't go, it won't go as we planned. Uh, you know, we always make plans for ourselves and, you know, it won't go as planned. And, you know, we might feel uh, down. We might get, uh, you know, we might feel like we're in a rabbit hole. And, um, you know, and that's when, you know, that's when we can 
look to God and look to Jesus for our comfort, for our hope, you know, to get us out of that situation that we put ourselves in. And, um, you know, this is everything that I say is I'm speaking from my own, from experience. And I've experienced things that, uh, you know, I've, I've experienced uh, some of the highest of highs as an athlete and some of the lowest of lows. So, you know, everything that I'm saying is from my own experience. So I think that's the first thing that, uh, you know, I think about when I think about things as human that we're guaranteed and, you know, we're guaranteed to, to, to mess up some things and, you know, not have everything go as we thought we thought we, it, it would go. So uh, that's number one. Um, and then I had number two was, you know, there's be times where we may feel untouchable. Um, you know, I know in sport, you know, maybe a time where you have a couple games where, you know, you you can't mess up. You everything's going right. Um, basketball specifically, I know I've had games where, or stretch of games where, you know, I could miss. Uh, everything's going well. We're winning basketball games. You know, I won a championship, so you may feel untouchable. So, you know, you, throughout life, I know myself. I've I've experienced the whole spectrum of feelings and, you know, things that you you you're guaranteed. So. Um, you know, those are the two things that I think you're guaranteed throughout life as a believer is just, you're going to feel the lowest of lows and you you might feel that, but you also on the other end of the spectrum, you could feel, you know, everything's going well, everything's going great. And you might feel on top of the world. Um, so I think those as humans, uh, you know, you can experience those two things. I think everybody will eventually. Mm-hmm. Great, thank you. Now, what about, what are some things that we call, uh, what's called common grace, which is just a general kind of God's grace over the earth, which would be like rain. You know, we need rain to live. We need air to breathe. There's just some things as he's, as, as he's the creator that he's allowed. But then specifically, you know, what are we guaranteed as his children? So just any, any of those categories can either a common grace thing or what are we guaranteed as a, as a child of God? Just anything. And again, you're setting the table for these breakout rooms. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about God's grace to his children and, and things we're guaranteed, um, and it's probably the best thing, is that we're guaranteed his love. Um, you know, me, like I said, I'm speaking from experience. Uh, you know, my last couple of years of college, I was able to be a little bit more, uh, okay with, you know, not necessarily having the best game all the time because I constantly reminded myself that, you know, it doesn't matter what I do on the court. It doesn't matter what happens, um, in that game. Uh, I knew once I stepped off the court that God loved me no matter what happened. It didn't matter if I scored 30 points. It didn't matter if I didn't score at all. I knew, you know, once I dropped to my knees and prayed, then there was a loving father there ready to listen to what I had to say. And I think that was, that allowed me to be a little bit more free in, in how I played because, you know, that, that was non-negotiable. Um, that's something that was always there. It's like we said, it's a guarantee. So, um, you know, that was, that was, that's one of the things that I think is the best part about it is because like I say, you're able to be free, you're able to play how you want to play. Um, and you're able to be yourself, um, as God's child. And I think the biggest part of me experiencing that was figuring out that my identity wasn't on the basketball court. It was in God. And once I figured that out, I was able to, um, you know, the rest of it kind of came around and realizing that the love was there and that I'm God's child no matter what happened on the court. So that was, that's my number one guarantee um, that God makes to his children. Mm. Um, thank you, Kenny. Well, thank you for setting the table. Adam, were you getting us in breakout rooms? Okay. I think it's about five minutes. Again, you guys share what you want, but. The more you share and listen, the more you're going to discover. So thank you, Kenny. We'll no see you in five minutes. Thanks, Adam. 
Well, hey, hope you just interacted a little bit. And if a couple of you wouldn't mind, maybe a couple thoughts that either you said or something you heard, you thought, man, I, I really, I really like that. Again, it's about discovery. So I'll just open the floor, unmute yourself and just tell us what you're thinking. So we first talked about kind of like how Kenny talked about like you're all you're we're all guaranteed to to mess up. We talked about how trials are certain. Um, Jesus talks about this often, saying like it's going to come for for everybody. Like he he suffered and and faced some serious like unrighteous judgment, and like we're going to face similar things in this world, and that's certain. Thanks, Dougie. You're welcome. Kind of on the flip side of that, like from God's point of view, he guarantees and promises uh, forgiveness towards us, like no matter how many times we mess up. You know I mean? No matter how far we stray away, he's always going to leave the 99 and come for us. So, Thank you, Nick. That's, that's more than a big deal. That is a huge deal. One of, one of the things we just really wanted to focus on, you know, when, when you just, when you just flat out, just say, you know what, what in the world am I guaranteed in this life? I mean, actually, that's a good question. It's almost, almost, hey, allow yourself to be frustrated with it. It's like, man, what, what am I guaranteed? Because it really makes you stop and think, what am I really building my foundation on? You know, is it, is it a rock? Is it sand? And for the next few minutes, I just want to pull out a few thoughts. Scott, if you could put up that verse, the Deuteronomy 29, 29 verse, that would be really good. You know, there's, there's two different ways we can look at stuff. And it's called theology from above or theology from below. And we want to start with God and work our way back towards ourselves, towards mankind. Because if we start with ourselves and then we try to figure out God, we're always going to go off the rails because then we're making man the center. So this is a passage in Deuteronomy. It's in the Old Testament. And there's so many things that were going on. There's actually some verses right before that we're talking about judgment. And this says the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our sons forever that we may observe all the words of the of this law. Wanted to bring this passage to the surface and just say, you know what? There are things that we will absolutely not understand as humans. We just will not. There's no way we're going to understand everything. God is sovereign, which means he rules overall. He's the ruler. He's not ruled by anyone. But in his sovereignty, which is, means he, he reigns, he's the king, he has decreed that everyone have free will. So as we make choices, even if they're bad choices, he's given us free will. We don't understand a lot of stuff, but he has revealed to us enough so that we could know him. That's the really good news. That's the really good news. He is the creator, and so in Genesis 1 and 2, starts out in the beginning, God created, and he just, he goes through those two chapters of he is the creator. If, if people think he's not the creator, then they think, well, I don't have to give an account to anybody. I can live my life the way I want. Now, Kenny and myself and Hubert and Ricky Harris, uh, Hubert's assistant coach and some of the guys we're going through the book of job so we're in chapter three this week but i kind of cheated and i actually listened to the whole book and i got to the end and chapters 38 through 41 in job is where god finally answers job's so so-called friends and the claims against job 
But God didn't say anything about why Job had gone through what he had gone through. He focused, God focused four chapters on the creation and that he's the creator. So there's something about the center that God's the creator and we're not. And that's, that's a guarantee that he's the creator. And as the creature, our role is to find out, okay, who is he and how can I surrender and adhere to what he wants to do in my life? So there's some things we're not going to know, but he's given us enough to know him. And one of the first things is he is the creator God. Another thing, he actually made angels, which are called ministering, basically like servants. And for whatever reason, the main angel, and this is recorded very clearly in the Bible, the main angel who was in charge of worship decided that he wanted to be God, that he wanted to take all the credit, all the glory. He wanted to be God. And his name is called Satan. And so the Bible makes it really clear there is a God, but there is evil. There are evil angels. And it says one third of the angels fell with Satan. And so the reality is, from the human perspective and the spiritual perspective, there is an enemy. It's a spiritual enemy that influences mankind. Now, God, he's more powerful, but the reality is there is evil in the world. And I don't think that's too hard to agree with. Another couple things is... God's the creator, and we're not. There is guaranteed, as indicated by scripture, there will be an, a day of accounting, and it's called the day of judgment. And there, there are two kinds of judgments described in the Bible. One is for the believers, and that's called the Bema seat judgment. And that's not being judged on whether you are a Christian or not but it's judged kind of like a reward ceremony based on the good works that you've done in this life. And then there's the final judgment is called the great white throne judgment, which is in Revelation. And frankly, that's the scary one. That's the judgment where all people will have to stand before God as they've rejected Christ, rejected God, and they'll be judged according to their works. So there is a guarantee whether we believe it or not, that there will be a day of judgment, which if you know Christ, you can be excited about that. If you don't, that's another story. That's why we need Jesus. That's one of the reasons. Another thing is Jesus was the mediator. So he was the person who stepped in to take our place. Scott, if you could bring up the Romans 5, I'm just going to read it from my notes. One of my favorite passages, starting with verse 6, for a while we were still helpless, so we couldn't change our nature. We have what's called a sinful nature. While we're helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. It means we can't fix ourselves. Then, it's just a great kind of perspective. Uh, one will hardly die for a righteous man. Though perhaps for a good man, someone would dare to die. There are stories throughout history, especially family members who, would, who have died to save their children. Uh, and it's incredibly honorable. But verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, towards people, and that while we were yet sinners, that means we couldn't change ourselves, Christ died for us. He died in our place to pay the penalty. Scott, go ahead and put the 2 Corinthians 5.21. I gave that to you a little late. I'm not, oh, thanks for getting it up there. So God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, so he was perfect to be sin on our behalf. So he took our sin on himself so that we might become the righteousness of God. That's called the great exchange where Jesus took our sin on himself and then he gave us his right standing with God. Okay, there's a guarantee if you have Christ, you are in right standing. Like you don't have to question it. You don't have to question it at all. 
Let's go to the John 16, 7. Again, we're just running through a few verses because we're going to go back in our breakout room. So John 16, 7 is a very interesting passage. Okay, Jesus had been with his disciples for three years. He started his ministry at age 30. In the Jewish culture, boys would study up to a certain, you know, like 12, 13, 14 years old, and then they would decide if they were going to study more, if they were going to follow a rabbi, and they would follow a rabbi teaching. At the age of 30 is when they were considered really being an adult. I mean, well, I don't know what our age is now, but, but 30. So Jesus started when he was 30. That was the age that was the respectable view that you are an adult man. And that's when he started. So he was with them for three years, did miracles, did amazing things. He was perfectly God and he was perfectly man. Well, in this verse, he's telling his disciples, he said, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. Now, he had been with them for three years. I mean, he, he did amazing things. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, the helper is the Holy Spirit. That's the life source of God. So he's saying, hey, it's, it's to your advantage that I leave you. Now, if you're with your leader, your teacher, your mentor, you've seen him do amazing things. And they said, hey, it's to your advantage that I leave. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, I don't think it's, I don't think it's to our advantage that you leave. I want you to stay. But he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit who's going to come. Now, in scripture, God guaranteed his presence with his people from the beginning to the end. They had what's called the tabernacle when they were wandering in the wilderness, the Israelites, and it was a big tent. And God's presence was seen by a cloud by day and flames and fire by night. And whenever he would want them to move, he would just start moving the cloud and they'd have to pack up and start following him. But he, that was his presence with his people. Then they eventually built a temple. And when Solomon prayed to dedicate the temple, God's glory filled the temple. And again, that was showing the presence of God. Now, when a person comes to know Christ, the Spirit of God comes inside that person to live. They're, they're born anew. And they are given a new nature. And actually, it says that now that believer is the temple of God, the presence of God. And let's look at the Ephesians 1 verse. Scott, thanks for just putting them up there. One of the greatest truths that is absolutely guaranteed us by God for the person who knows Jesus is they are adopted into his family. Like literally you are adopted into his family. This verse says in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. I'll just stop there. The Holy Spirit of promise. No, not, I, sorry, I got to keep going. Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, the praise of his glory. So here's what God's saying. He said, you put your trust in Christ. The Holy Spirit's going to come in and live inside you. He's going to seal you. He's going to guarantee you that one day you will be with God forever and ever and ever for eternity. It's like a down payment. And the different verses that popped up when I typed in guaranteed in my Bible software kept referring to the Holy Spirit is guaranteed as a down payment to the believer. We don't have to walk this life alone at all. The presence of God means more than anything. I don't know how, how you all feel, but there's a lot of times when you just, frankly, you just feel lonely. And I struggled with loneliness a bunch in high school and college but when christ entered my life that vacuum of loneliness 
honestly, I just haven't really felt like I did before Christ. Now, there's times when you can feel lonely, but there's a difference between feeling lonely and being alone. There's a difference between feeling lonely and being alone. And the, God says he absolutely guarantees that to his children, his presence is going to be with them, which is just, you talk about a gift. It's just a gift. A couple other things, and then we're going to go into breakup. Dougie already mentioned this in James. God guarantees that there will be trials in life. Now, here's the thing. Let's say you don't know Christ. You don't really care about God. You're going to just live the life you want. Hey, that's your choice. But let me ask you, will you face trials and struggles in your life? Absolutely, because we're human and we live in a broken world. You're going to experience it. Now, as a follower of Christ, will you experience struggles and suffering in life? Absolutely. Do Christians die of cancer? Yeah. If you walk out and it's in the pouring rain, are you going to get wet because you're a Christian? Probably so. So there's, hey, we're, there's going to be struggles no matter what. God says through his word, as a believer in Christ, you get God all the way through. You get his presence, the gift of who he is all the way through. He also says he's going to conform us to the image of Jesus. He's going to kind of chip away at the stuff in our life. And just frankly, it's a bunch of crap and it's, it's holding us back. So he's going to work on us, whittle things out. He says he wants to bear fruit in our life and to make us more like himself. So my question as we head into the breakout rooms for just a few more minutes is what do you really want in your life? I mean, what do you really want? And specifically, what would you really want with God? Do you truly know him? Like, are you absolutely 100% sure that you know Jesus? Now, that's not based on your goodness. It's based on his goodness. He's died in our place. You can mention that in the breakout group if you'd like. What foundation are you building your life on? Is it the rock or is it the sand? Is it something that could be easily pulled out? And then where do you go from here? So let's go ahead and go to the breakout rooms. There's two questions. One is what's challenged you or kind of what's grabbed your heart or attention this evening? And what do you really want to know and experience? as you move forward in your life. And there's, again, this is a great time for discovery. Be open and we'll come back about 8.55 and then we'll wrap things up. Thanks, Adam. Well, I hope that your time just process a little bit was really good for you. Because next week we're gonna, we're gonna pick up, stay on the topic, uh, look at a few different things. And in closing, Kenny, I wanted to ask, well, first, again, thanks for being with us. Kenny, you, you got to share some of your thoughts on the front end. You were in two breakout rooms with some other people. You know, you listened to some verses. Just what are some of your thoughts as we close out the evening? Just kind of what you're thinking. And I appreciate just your honesty and openness. Um, just thinking about... Uh, you know, the last two questions mainly, uh, you know, it got me to thinking about, you know, some of the things that I've done in, in some of my Bible studies here throughout the quarantine. And uh, I was telling this last group, one of the things that I had done um, in a smaller, in a smaller group, one of my smaller Bible studies was, you know, we actually went into detail about the crucifixion and, what Jesus had to go through on that day, um, you know, how they were methodical about where they put the nails in his wrist and in his feet. And it kind of, um, kind of gave me a different perspective on the whole thing because, you know, you can think about, you can say, oh, Jesus, you know, took God's wrath. But, you know, when you think about it like that and how, 
you know, he hung on the cross in excruciating pain, no matter what he did. If he tried to take a breath, there was pain. And if he let up, there was pain. So that kind of gave me a different perspective on the whole thing. And I think, you know, that's good to think about. I mean, it's not the best thing to think about because, you know, that that's, that's our savior that, you know, had to go through all of that, but, you know, he did it for us and he did it so willingly. Um, you know, it's kind of a, that, that love, that's a love that we can't really comprehend. Um, a love that, you know, God just has for us every single day. Mm. Mm, that's good, Kenny. Wow. Thank you. And what, what Kenny's talking about, there's a word called propitiation, which I doubt if we've used that much in the, the last week. But here's basically what it's saying. Our rebellion against God was so bad that God had to separate us from himself. So we, we can't have a relationship with him because our rebellion, our sin is so bad. The suffering that Jesus went through, as Kenny was talking about, was really showing that God the Father placed his and the bible calls it wrath it means righteous judgment upon sin he placed that on jesus himself that's why jesus said my god my god why are you forsaking me he had never said that in the history of the world of all eternity jesus had never said that but he said that because at that moment our sin was actually placed on jesus and jesus felt the separation from God. So propitiation basically means what Jesus took on himself was in our place so that God's punishment would not be on us. It was actually placed on Jesus. And the way you have him in your life is when your heart basically says, as Scott mentioned a little earlier, that Romans verse, while we we're still helpless, you know, God, Jesus died for the ungodly. We have to acknowledge that we were bankrupt morally, spiritually. Jesus is the only one that lived perfectly. I repent in that, Lord, I want to change my mind and how I view you. So would you let my heart, would you let me really know you? Absolutely know you and be guaranteed that I'm your child. Like you can pray that. God, I want to know for sure. I want to know 100% for sure that I know you that I know Jesus. You can pray that. And that's probably one of his favorite prayers to answer. He's going to answer that. He's going to be faithful to answer that. So let's close in light of that. Of just, hey, if you're not sure if you know Christ, pray yourself. Just, Lord, I really want to know you. I want to know you from the depths of my heart. You show up. Give me 100% assurance that I'm your child and that I have forgiveness. And then I would suggest sometime this week, go to the book of John, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and read chapter three of John. Chapter three, just read that. Say, God, would you open my eyes and show me the truths that you're working into my life? And then we'll come back together next week, pick up. So, Let's, let's just pray. Lord, thank you for speaking to us. Uh, for those who aren't sure if they know you, would you allow their heart to believe in you and to surrender to you and that you would invade their life with the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gift of knowing you. Thank you for the words that we could read from your word and then just interact with one another. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for being with us. We'll be back next week. Kenny, thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. I'm sure others do as well. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I loved it. I'm, I'm, I might be back next week, honestly. Well, you and I can talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's do it. Uh, we, we, we'd love to have you. Okay. See everybody. Thank you.